when they realize that the number of patients, yeah. COVID patients, may increase going to their private hospitals, mm -hmm. they, they came with a proposal to say, let us build a facility in Lady Pohamba. They say that they will be able to raise money for that facility. But then, Lady Pohamba said, you can build it and it will only last for 12 months. Mm. Not more. Then you dismantle it and then you give back our space. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the beginning. And then they came to my office. We had a discussion. We said, look, we need to increase capacity. By that time, we were already preparing our capacity at Vinduk Central Hospital, Katutura, yeah. Oshakati, Wolf's Bay, we're already increasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, when they came back to us to say, look, I think this proposal, somebody who proposed this thing, did not understand the whole situation. We don't have money for that. And oh. I have that one in writing. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So, the private sector actually pulled out in terms of funding, but they say, yeah, if we can get uh, architects, uh, other people to help you. Now, as a government, we said we may need this facility. So we asked the city of Vinuk mm -hmm. to give us their Reno garment factory. They responded in writing and gave us that permission. I have the letter. Yeah. So now we said, okay. Let us engage our architects and the other people to develop, to come with a concept paper and the cost estimate, which happened. Hmm. And then, after that, I approached cabinet. We have this plan. And I also said, we are doing this and this and this here and there. And then it was stated that, okay, for the time being, let us continue with the projects mm -hmm. which are already in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And then we keep this one. We are not, uh, we are not canceling it. We are just keeping it at bay until we develop the one in the hospitals and to see whether there will still be any need to continue. Mm. So that's what happened. Okay. That's what, yeah. Oh, that's what happened. Uh, what about private sector? Were they then involved in this idea? I mean, uh, Dr. Haufiku mentioned places like Pukavit and Spa and the fact that they were willing to um, provide funding to the, towards these projects, but because the project was shut down, um, they also pulled out. No, let me tell you the truth. The truth of the matter is, we were going ahead with the project together with the private sector. Initially, they said they don't need any funding from government. Mm -hmm. Then we move ahead. And then later, they came back to say, we don't have the money. And then government said, okay, if you don't have the money, mm -hmm. we will continue on our own. You understand? Yes, I understand, Dr. Shangla. Yeah. So the government decided that we will continue with the project 
without the private sector because the private sector they say they don't have the funds mm. anymore whatever was promised at the beginning it was no longer available mm. because it was not funds which were there it was funds which were going to be raised through financial institutions how much are these funds that we're talking about that is needed for this project and then maybe when do we invest search for this to be set up or are we just waiting for maybe the need arises now at the present moment mm -hmm. our initial uh, projects they are ongoing okay we have uh, we we are developing as an additional 63 beds in vinhook mm -hmm. an additional 63 bed in uh, oshakati which was already in progress before the um, private sector came in okay so we are pro proceeding with those program mm -hmm. and i can assure you at the present moment we do not have a shortage of beds yeah you told me yesterday yeah but i understand that in the private sector they have a challenge when it comes to bed but for us we treat everybody every namibian who has got COVID in our facilities they can just refer and they will get the, the, the best treatment. Mm. Yeah. In terms of what uh, Dr. Haufiku said uh, with regards to assessing the, um, the level of readiness in the regions, what can you say to that allegation? I mean, he said that he had, a, uh, he had approached you to say, we, we have acquired a private jet. Let's, let, let us go to the regions and assess the readiness. What can you say to that, Dr. Shangla? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when we are dealing with the pandemic, mm -hmm. we need to pull all our forces together. We had daily meetings, daily strategic meetings, and I invite him as a special advisor in the office of the vice president to be part of those meetings. Mm. So he was aware of everything we were doing. Now, what, what are the strategies? How do you go about it? Mm. We have regional directors, regional management teams who are dealing with the situation on the ground in those regions. Just like we have the same in Vinhook. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they got all the instructions, what needs to be done, how, uh, what member to set up in their committees and mm -hmm. decide on everything. Now, if you want to go, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? <laughs> now, just tell me, I ask for the terms of reference. Mm. What is supposed to be done, A, B, C? There were no terms of reference. Do we just use on aeroplane because there is there is one available or is it going to serve any purpose mm -hmm. we had all the teams in place and they give us information on daily basis so we know exactly everything there's nothing one who you can go when you can mm. go and do it unless you take an excursion yeah 
there is no information which was lacking which we can go and you you you, you jet in today mm. and today you come out and you think that you have uh, assessed the situation it's not possible correct correct i mean that depends on what I, maybe he had a different idea in place that's why he had suggested it but i wouldn't know but did he was he the head of no no mm -hmm. don't 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 put that chick in the tank okay the the, the, the fact of the matter is covid 19 is a disease mm. yes, doctor. okay and covid 19 is a disease like hepatitis e is being managed by the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the head of the ministry is the minister. Yeah. He gives directives, he get advice, but not any member of the team which he has composed mm. who say, I'm doing this separately. Yeah. But what was his I, role? I hope doctor? you understand. Yeah, I'm understanding. But what was his role then, with regards to the, to the, to the response, to being part of the response uh, or the task force? Yeah, let me tell you one thing. There was nothing like a task force. Oh. We have a national health emergency committee. It was expanded through government yeah. to include both health and economic sector. They, the team analyzed economic, inf economic factors, epidemiological factors, and they advise what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay? They work behind the scenes. And all decisions of government were based on that. And then cabinet will meet almost on a daily basis Yeah. to analyze the information, say so what regulation to take, what measure to take, lockdown here, unlocked down here, etc., etc., it was based on sound evidence. Yes, doctor. And the cabinet was meeting almost on a daily basis at, at, until midnight, up to midnight. Mm. So what was Dr. Haufiku's role in all of this? I mean, he was saying he was leading the task force and we never really quite understood what that meant, or at least now we don't understand what that entails. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who, 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 who put forth that narrative. I can only explain what was there, not what he says. Okay. What was there is COVID-19 is a disease. It's within the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Mm -hmm. The head of the ministry is the Minister of Health and Social Services. So the whole responsibility of COVID-19 management and control, like hepatitis E, like TB, like malaria, like whatever, all the diseases, Mm -hmm. This with the Ministry of Health and Social Services. We have structures in place. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when this came about, the minister has to take lead within the existing structures. There is nothing like a national task force on COVID-19 and a leader of that there is nothing like that that was actually announced earlier in the year doctor that i don't know who created that it does not exist earlier in the year when when we're still dealing with the pandemic it, that was announced that he is the leader of the task force 
That was his position. I remember we used to quote him as such. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Mm. I don't know where you got that from. Where did you get that? Where did it originate from? There was nothing like that. I, I don't know whether you created as journalist yourself. No, no, because, no, doctor. Because no, no, nobody came. To, <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody gonna came to the ministry to ask what is the, the situation. <laughs> no, I think it was announced at State House. No. I remember very, very well one of the one of the COVID uh -huh. briefings. It was announced that he is the leader of the task force. Even when he stood up to speak up at one of the briefings earlier, much earlier in the year, it was announced that he is the leader of the task force. So he will be responsible for responding. And then when things changed, then he was removed from that, or he was, or he said he was banned from speaking to the media. One of the two. Yeah. Okay. Let yeah. me tell you, um, all the media briefings. Yes, Dr. Shangula. You, you, at the state house, mm -hmm. I was present. Okay? Yes, Dr. Shangula. Up to now. When, okay, let me tell you that Dr. Haufiku was a minister of health. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then. I was asked by the president. Uh, Dr. Shamula. Oh, okay, now I can hear you. Okay. I was asked by the president to be the Minister of Health. Okay? Yes, doctor. He then got appointed as a special advisor in the oh, office of the vice president, not in the ministry. Do you know that? Yes, I, I know that too. So he was appointed in the office of the vice president. And then it was said he can be seconded to the Ministry of Health, which I welcomed. Okay? Yes, doctor. All right. And then, when it comes to his removal, mm -hmm. I did a request to the president to say the situation within the team has become so bad because of ABC and we would like if you can withdraw him from the Ministry of Health and Social Services to go back to the office of the Vice President. Mm. That's all what that's all what happened. But I don't want to to go into the details yeah. as to what happened, what he did, what other people were saying about him, and what, and whatever, whatever. I don't want to go into those details. Understood, Dr. Yeah. But yeah. What, what? But before uh, leading to his removal from the, from your ministry, what was the relationship like? With who? With Dr. Haufiku. With me. Yeah. Dr. Haufiku, with me, we had a very, very good collegial relationship. Mm. I would uh, call him to tell him that, look, these are the problems. These are, what, what are you doing? People are complaining about this and this and this and this. So please change. We have never, an, we, we never had animosity between him and me from my side. I mm -hmm. would call him, when I get this thing, I will call him, and then we talk, and then I say, please change, mm -hmm. and yeah, but it seems uh, this thing kept on continuing, coming back, coming back, until there was no, 
the, the situation within the team was so bad. Yeah, yeah. so then, uh, then uh, okay, say, if you would, okay, what do you do as a manager? Now you have this, you have done this, you have done this, it's not helping. Maybe, can this person maybe, you know, yeah, uh, be, be withdrawn. Moved. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of consultation and there was a lot of cautioning. Can we, why do you do this? Why is this? Why is this? And the whole thing is that you have a pandemic. Mm. One thing you don't want is conflict within a team which is responsible for controlling the pandemic. And I can tell you that up to now I have never had any problem. No problem within no. the, the team that deals with up the pandemic. Up to now, since June up to now, I have never had a problem. Mm. Nobody came to me to complain, nobody came to say this is doing what and what, but it was a, almost a daily occurrence. Okay. So the team is working very well and they are addressing the issues within the limitation of the resources available. Okay. So uh, lastly, Dr. Shangula, um, are you satisfied with how um, we are dealing with the pandemic? despite the second wave and um, also, you know, more deaths being recorded and so forth? I'm not satisfied. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lie. I, I'm not satisfied. Today I will announce another two deaths. I will only be satisfied if I say Today we are reporting zero cases. Mm. Today we are reporting zero death. That's the only time I'll be satisfied. No, zero. All right, Dr. Shangula, thank you for this interview. I thank you very much. Yeah, enjoy your day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just try, even though it's... When I, okay, <laughs> when are you going to publish this? Uh, today. But uh, Namibia is not going out. Online. We have the oh, online platform. Oh, we are still just, working online. Oh, I never. I, I don't think I have that one. No, you should. You should see Twitter and Facebook. Okay, forward it to me. Okay, I will surely do so, Doctor Shangula. Yeah. All right. Thank you just so much. Just forward to me, so that I can say that you have. Okay. accurately reflected <laughs> what I told you. If not, I will call you. Yes, I know for sure. I know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, doctor. Okay, All bye. Right, bye.